Hello, so today I want to talk about 5.8 GHz video antennas. Uh, I think if there's one thing that's a given, it's that these little rubber ducks you get in the Immersion RC or the Boscan VTX and receivers are pretty rubbish. You get multipathing, you get a loss of signal as the orientation of the antenna will change on your plane. Um, so pretty much scoop planar antennas are the way to go and I've been getting mine lately from Big Nose 13 um, and I'm really happy with the quality. Um, now I like to fly pretty light. Uh, I have a walk to my local field that's about 20 minutes across a muddy path fields. Uh, you have to jump over a stream at one point. So I don't like to drag a ground station around. Um, so going light, I like to have my skew on my goggles here. This is a big nose one. And um, I use the same on a plane. Here's the canopy from my Bixler. I've just glued my camera back on after a crash. So range-wise, on this skew to skew configuration, um, I've been out to around 2.5k uh, a couple of times. Now, at uh, going past 2 towards sort of 2.2 is when you start seeing a little bit of static appearing on your goggles. Um, and 5.8 means the atmospheric conditions depends a lot about the sort of picture you're going to see. But I fly quite conservatively, so as soon as I'm starting to see the picture sort of fade off is my turnaround point. So right now, 2.5k has been sort of my safe maximum. Um, but at the same point, most of my flying is done up to about a k, maybe a k and a half. And on that sort of range, the skews are brilliant. Pretty much all around me, um, wherever I go, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to have a really good picture and there's not going to be a problem. Now I'm not really what you call a long range flyer, um, certainly not on my 2.4 GHz radio, I'm using the Tyrannus at the moment with stock antennas, but I do like to see how far I can go just occasionally. So in preparation for that, I bought again from Big Nose, or Simon, uh, this 5 turn helical antenna. Um, it's made with this really nice flexible uh, wire, so you can mount it to the goggles, the idea is you'll be able to manually head track. Um, I haven't used it yet. It's quite a step up from a skew. Um, and one of the things I'm slightly worried about is that the beam width you get, because it is of course directional, you need to point in the direction of your plane, is, and I'm checking my notes for this, about 48 degrees. Um, which is quite narrow. And I've heard some people saying that there can be, uh, it's, it's a real point of having to concentrate very hard on keeping your head pointed in the right direction. Um, so I've been a bit concerned about this. Will I be able to do it? And does this really belong more on a tripod where it's easy to track manually but you'd have it pointing straight and you wouldn't have to worry about keeping your head absolutely fixed. So is there a middle ground for this? Uh, so here is what I think is the middle ground. Three turn helical, almost the same as five turn but less turns. <laughs> you can wear that bit out. Goes on the goggles nicely. Um, hopefully easy to track with the head. Crucially, the, the beam width is 62 degrees-ish, uh, which 20 degrees more doesn't sound an awful lot, but um, in practice, it should be a lot easier to keep your head, well, you won't need to keep it as still. The small movements aren't gonna push you out the end of the beam, hopefully. So I went and tested this at the Mad Dog 6 meet, which is a brilliant place to test things where you're a bit unfamiliar with. You've instantly got sort of 10 spotters on hand, and you've got multiple people that can also sit in goggles with different antennas to give you their impression of what the picture was like. So you can see instantly that this free turn helical will make you look very handsome indeed, even in a big floppy hat. And if you're wondering what that lump on the left side of my head is, it's my DVR to record. Um, so this is my first flight and what a rubbish throw that was. What you'll notice is this is uh, the HD footage, not the ground recording and that's because I managed to lock my DVR up. Here's my DVR, and it's actually a pretty good one. Um, I got this from BevRC. Lots of other people do them with just different splashing screens. Um, very occasionally, if you've just given it static and static and static, it will lock up, and the only thing you can do is remove the battery, which loses your recording. Uh, the reason I was getting lots of static is I was testing the limits of what I could do. So in my goggles, um, I was flying out uh, and at about a k and a half, 2k, I was 
turning right round to see the limits of it and to see where the signal would fall off. If you did it closer in, uh, you wouldn't have a signal fall off. Close in, you can fly behind yourself, at the side of yourself, um, because there's still a bit of radiated receiver signal that comes out the back and the sides, uh, which is quite handy if you're having to line up for landing behind yourself and coming into wind. However, on this particular occasion, it did lock up, just as I was at 3K and broke my previous record. So I've got no ground recording at all. Um, so that's not a very good test. Obviously, we needed to fly again. All right. So here's the second flight, and it's a much better manly throw from Neil. He sat with me with his goggles on, with a normal skew antenna, to see what sort of picture he had. Uh, it'd be a bit worrying to watch it all at normal speed, so let's speed up to go to one kilometre out. As you can see, at one kilometre, everything is fine, it, it, pretty much as you expect. I had a few small adjustments of my head position, just whenever I got just a little bit of um, fuzz or anything, I would just try and turn my head just a couple of degrees either side and, and see what happened. So that being good, let's carry on to 2K. At 2K, we're still good. Just up to this point, somebody turned on a 5.8 to fly an EDF-equipped TBS Discovery, uh, which was really something to behold. So he's on 5.8 flying around us. Neil's got a little bit of ghosting in his goggles. Mine seems to be OK, so let's carry on to 3K. So as we come up to 3 kilometers, which was my original target, I decided just to push on a little bit further because everything's looking really good. So I'll put on a bit of the ground station audio recording as we get to three and a half kilometers and see if you can hear what my Tyrannus decides to say. Three and a half K out. Ooh, telemetry. That's not good. <gasps> Alright, three and a half, so I'm making a turn I think. Okay. Keep it sensible. Telemetry lost and the telemetry <laughs> recovered. You know that one where she just tries to shit you up as much as possible. <laughs> Don't say that. There you go. Good girl. Yeah, I've got, I've lost, well, I haven't lost video, but I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in now on mine. Okay. I think three is probably a safe margin on this particular receiver. <laughs> but it hasn't, LTH hasn't kicked in, so it's still flying all right at the moment. Yep, about 500, I, yeah, I'm barely, there we go, 550 up. Yep. So you're, oh, it's still about 34k. Yeah, I've barely, barely got any throttle on, let's have a look. Well, it's spinning. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, always a, that's always a good sign. We're on the start of the return leg now, and what we're having is a little bit of antenna blocking from the LiPo in the nose of the Bixler. So we get a little bit of static here. Neil, with his skew antenna, um, has a screen full of complete static for a lot of this. So I'm, I'm pretty glad to have the 8 dBi gain we're getting from the free turn. As we get in a bit closer on the return leg, I make a turn here at around 1.6 kilometers out and decide to fly off a little bit at a different angle. Um, I just want to see what sort of beamwork we get. So I'm not really having to move my head at all much as, as I'm moving around. Um, so the, the, the width of the beam is really suiting the goggles well. I'm not whipping my head around and having to do much. And as I come into land here, I'm pretty much facing straight out into the field, which is about 90 degrees different from the way I'm coming in. So again, the, the close in um, distance, you, you don't have the problem with really having to track your head that much at all. It's just it's just good to go, which is really helpful when you're landing planes and you're, you're dealing with the wind direction. 3,576. So there you go. The Big Nose 13, free turn helical. A great addition to your 5.8 goggles, I think. If you're a real range monkey and you're really going for it, you'll be on a tracker, you'll have a massive 12 turn, or you'll probably not be on 5.8.
Despite that, I was surprised by the range this could get. Somebody else was flying a 12 turn 5.8 helical with a tracker at 7 point something kilometres. As he was returning, I decided to plug this in, see if I could get a signal, uh, and I could. At 6.2 kilometres, I had a fairly clear screen. Now, I had to get my head exactly lined up, um, but the fact I got a picture at all on just a free turn was, was pretty amazing to me. So, there's a lot more this can do. Um, unfortunately, I don't think the Tyrannus will do much more, so uh, we'll see what we can do from that. Hopefully, the new Free Sky receivers will let me go out a bit further, and I'll just see how far this will actually go. See you next time.